Hello there, friends, and welcome to a Weird 90s Laptop Review. Today, we're going to be looking at the Hyperdata 486. So this is a 486 with four, yes, four megs of RAM. Uh, and it was really hard to find literally any information at all about this on the internet. This Hyperdata laptop was also sold under a few other names, including Innovace, which I thought was pronounced Innovace when I first saw it, but it turns out it's like Innovation and Ace smushed together, which is stupid. And this was also sold as an MPC, and I couldn't find which of those was the original name or manufacturer of this. All I could find really was a couple Russian websites that talked about this and one thread on Reddit where somebody had this under that Innovace name. So I'm really amazed, actually, given this thing's low specs. It is running Windows 95, and it's running it rather well. So today we're going to review this thing. We're going to take a look at all of the little weird, interesting bits about it. We're going to power it up, see what it's capable of. I have a couple tests that uh, would be kind of fun to run on floppy disk because this does not have a CD-ROM drive. Uh, we're going to see what the screen is like. Spoiler, it's broken. We're going to see how it sounds. I don't think this has a sound card. We're going to see what it's like gaming. I have a couple games. And we're going to see what it's like to actually use this computer as a computer. And finally, we're going to try to install some kind of Linux on it. And I have here Slackware 1 on 10 floppy disks. And it should be possible. I think the minimum for Slackware 1 was 4 megs of RAM. So we lucked out there. So let's power it on and see what's up. Ugh. So the screen is absolutely terrible. Even considering this about an inch of completely dead space because it's cracked now, even before it was cracked, passive matrix is always really quite terrible. Uh, this computer also came in a black and white version, and I only know that because that's the only other listing I saw on the whole of eBay for a computer like this. So I think I got the good one. But unfortunately, either way, due to the extreme ghosting and how small this screen is, I'm going to have to give it a 2 out of 5. Uh, those two points are for how nice the colors look on here. <laughs> So for our sound test, I have a magic disc with some music stuff on it, including two versions of Winamp and an MP3. I highly doubt either one of those is going to work because one, I don't think this has a sound card in it. Uh, and two, I don't think even Winamp one point whatever I have on here, I don't think that's going to work with four megs of RAM. But hey, let's give it a shot. You can barely see the mouse cursor on this thing, and there's a huge trail behind it. I bet we could turn mouse trails on, and that would help us out a little bit. Let's see. Let's open up the floppy. What am I doing? My computer. Floppy disk, eh? And we have seeking sound, that's good. Man, this cracked screen is terrible. All right, so I've got Winamp 1 and Winamp 1.2. Uh, both of these are supposed to work on Windows 95. 
Let's see if we have any luck. Let's try more recent first, Winamp 1.2. Hey, look at that, it's Winamp. All right, let's open up our MP3. Could not initialize audio. No sound driver found. Oh. Well, that's a shame. So I think for audio, we're gonna have to give this guy a zero out of five. So I actually have a whole bunch of games that we can try on here, uh, including Descent, uh, Warcraft, and a fallback Crystal Cave. Well, that's too bad. We don't have enough memory to run a first-person shooter based on the Wolfenstein 3D engine. So we won't get to see just how terrible the passive matrix screen makes playing in FPS. But let's try something else. Let's play Crystal Caves and see, oh, that sound. Let's see just how bad a fast paced game is on the passive matrix screen. Here we go. Of course, can't see him because he's right behind the break, but we'll drop down in a second. There we go. Let's jump. Whoa. Ah. Uh oh, uh oh. Nope. Oh my god, I can't see anything. I guess it's not as bad as I thought it would be. But it's certainly not good. I mean, I guess it's playable. It's, it's just on the edge of playable. How do I... There we go. For the gaming score, I'm going to have to give this a 2 out of 5. Mostly because this passive matrix screen is really terrible to play games on unless they're very slow moving games like a real time strategy. Also, 4 megs of RAM is not nearly enough to play any of the games you'd want to play on this computer other than really simple platformers, and that's about it. So the HyperData 46 was pretty obviously trying to look like a power book from Apple from the time period, something like a power book 180. So all the original power books looked a lot like this uh, even down to kind of the thickness of this and the hinge here uh, this hinge looks a lot like the power book hinge uh, all it's missing are the flip down little legs here and if you saw this just like sitting around in a coffee shop you might well think it was a power book so this computer is fairly hefty uh, maybe seven or eight pounds but that's not uncommon for computers of this day. You know, some computers weighed way more than this. So let's take a look around at the different ports and drives. So we have our standard floppy drive. 
And then around the back, we have a host of ports. We've got our PS2 keyboard port. We have our DB9 serial port, parallel video, which looks to be VGA, uh, DB25 serial port. This is our power jack and our power button, which is confusingly in like the same size circle as the power jack. So it took me way longer than it should have to figure out how to actually turn this computer on. And then around on the other side, we have a cutout, which I guess was for like a modem or uh, ethernet or something. And then we have our PCMCIA slots here. We've got two of them. So we could put, I don't know, Wi-Fi in here or an ethernet card or something. Um, and then we have our battery, which I think is a nickel cadmium. And then inside the hyperdata is where the real fun begins because what is this number pad here? So that's certainly a kind of a quirk of this computer is they put a number pad right into the palm rest exactly where your palm goes. Um, on the plus side, they have this cool font here in these super 90s colors. Whoops. So I'm going to go ahead and give them a, a whole extra point for that. So as far as the build of this laptop is concerned, I'm going to give them a 3 out of 5 for copying a power book pretty well and using the super 90s fonts and colors on here. So what was it like using the HyperData 486 as a real computer? Well, surprisingly, pretty much just like any other computer. I mean, it has all the basic components. It has a keyboard. It has maybe a little bit too much keyboard. This is too much keyboard, but it, the regular keyboard isn't that bad. The screen is terrible, but a lot of screens from back in the 90s were pretty terrible. I like the brightness control. I wish computers today had a brightness control. You didn't have to go into the computer's settings or control panel to change that stuff. Or you didn't have to hit a button on the bottom of the monitor and go through a million menus just to change the brightness and contrast. That's pretty handy. Bezel's a little thick, but they're making good use of it. Now the computer itself only has four megs of RAM. And it's kind of crazy to think that back in the 90s, four megs of RAM was plenty. I have all these windows open. It's loading a bunch of stuff. They have AOL 4 on here. There's Microsoft Office on here. And you can do all this stuff with four megs of RAM. And today, if you have a computer with four gigs of RAM, you can barely have three tabs in Chrome open and run Slack. And this is four megabytes of RAM. Remember, four megabytes of RAM, that is less than the total amount of space on these four disks. These are each 1.44 megabytes of storage. That is more storage than memory is in this computer. That's crazy. Look, they even have like a nice little office toolbar that for some reason, I guess, has an MS-DOS prompt in the office toolbar. I guess uh, computers didn't make a whole lot of sense back then. And just put things everywhere, such as a number pad. Look at that, we have Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word. So whoever had this computer before used it for a lot of word processing. They used it for the internet on AOL. Michael Jordan dot doc. What is that? So this word document is a little bit slow to low, but it's not ridiculously so. I mean, I've definitely opened up stuff in LibreOffice that has taken 30 seconds to open, and that took about 30 seconds to open here. Let's see, what does this person think about Michael Jordan? One can only hope to approach his level of fame or bask in his heroic persona. He has become every kid's role model, 
every man and woman's vision of what they could be in a perfect world. That's pretty good. I don't know if I feel the same way about Michael Jordan, but this person certainly felt a way about him. I don't like kid, that's too informal. He has become every child's role model. He is perhaps the greatest basketball player and greatest athlete of all time. Without any question or equivocation. Did I spell that right? I did. And he has achieved his place at the top of society's ladder with talent, character, and a little help from the media. All right, well, you know what? This keyboard isn't that bad to type on. Yeah, I mean, for the time, it's not that bad. I've definitely typed on worse modern keyboards. I mean, it's a little spongy, but the keys are pretty satisfying to press down. There's a, a wee bit of a click. You know, they pop right back up. They don't kind of like smoosh in and slowly come back up. And then you've got this number pad here, which I guess is handy. Although I think now that I've turned number lock on, if I was just sitting here typing, yeah, see, look at that. I'm definitely hitting, definitely hitting numbers as I type. I have pretty huge hands. So I can definitely see, look, I just hit the line return and I wasn't even trying that time. So I can definitely see that this number pad, not a good idea. I bet the previous owner left number lock on or off rather, unless they specifically needed this for some kind of accounting or Excel. So I don't know. I'm pretty split on this thing, leaning towards it's a terrible idea. So as far as usability is concerned for this computer, I think I'm going to have to give it a three out of five. I mean, it's not a bad little computer. It looks like a computer. It works like a computer. It has a little bit of character on a passable screen. And I really like this 90s font. And now the most important test. Can we boot some kind of a Linux? So I've got the first Slackware CD floppy disk in there. And let's turn this on and see what happens. Insert boot diskette in A. Press any key when ready. Well, there is a boot diskette. Um, nope. Let's try the other from the boot CD disk series. Hey, we're loading. It's booting the kernel. Please remove the boot kernel disk from your floppy drive. All right. So I think I need to take out that disk and put in the next one. Enter to continue. Oh. It's making a lot of noise.
Oh, so it wants me to manually partition, but I can't read half the instructions because the screen is cracked. Um, all right, so it wants me to use, I guess, F disk. If I have four megs or less of RAM, which is true, I do, you must activate a swap partition before running setup. After making the partition with F disk, I have to make it swap. You may now log in as root. All right, well, root. Hey, look at that. We're on kernel 0 0.99.15. How cool is that? Ah, so the bootloader to bootstrap the install is Linux Darkstar for 46 from 1994. Cool. Well, I am not going to install Slackware on this because unfortunately I have to send it back, but I'm gonna call this a Linux success We've got Slackware install process starting to run. We've even got a RAM disk in our four megs of RAM with a, an actual Linux kernel loaded. So, awesome. I'm going to give Linux a score of four out of five. <laughs> Despite all of this thing's flaws, I'm actually really disappointed that I have to send it back. I kind of really like this thing, even though the screen's terrible and it hardly has any RAM at all. It's a cool, quirky little laptop. So I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5, mostly for that cool factor, uh, and also just because it is a nice little package. Fortunately, the seller on eBay is taking it back. It was kind of their fault because they packed the power supply directly on top of the screen with no padding in between. So I'm actually kind of lucky the screen wasn't completely shattered and I was still able to do this review. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up or even a subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.